guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and Terry will be reviewing the all new 2023 Toyota Camry XSE. And a big thanks to Bill and the rest of the management and staff here at Toyota of Tampa Bay for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to their inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Bill. And as most of you guys probably know by now, the 8th generation Camry that you see here was released in 2018, facelifted for 2021, which features a different interior, new layout for the touchscreen, and an upgraded front fascia. We also get Safety Sense 2.5 Plus for all trims, and the XSE now gets smoked taillights. For 2023, Calvary Blue is now available on the SE and XLE trim level, no longer exclusive to the TRD, and Reservoir Blue is now available for all trims. The 2023 Camry starts with the LE trim at $25,945, still coming equipped pretty much loaded with features. We get 7-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and a pretty decent 6-speaker audio system. You can upgrade a couple thousand bucks to the SE, but we get Syntex Outline Seat, Sport Tune Suspension, and a base price of $27,485. You can upgrade to the SE Nightshade at $28,485, which gives you a little bit more black accents. The XLE is a top-of-the-line luxury trim for the four-cylinder Toyota Camry. The XSE is a sportier version of that at $31,245, featuring basically everything out of the XLE plus 19-inch black rims, sports suspension, and quad outlet dual exhaust. So the base price, again, at $31,245 before destination. What do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So as we mentioned, for 2021, we get an upgraded front fascia, black accents for the XSE, LED projector headlights, LED daytime running strips too, Toyota badge in the center, which houses your advanced safety features. The silver metallic paint color is beautiful, really shines in the Florida sun, and the black accents also have a metallic flare to it. Very clean touch overall. We'll take one more step back, get one last look at the front styling of the 2023 Camry XSE. Very aggressive front fascia, and I like how the hood has that slope towards the center, gives it a much sharper overall design. The wheel and tire setup all blacked out, 19 inch rims for the 2023 Camry XSE. These are 235-40 R19 Bridgestone Terenza all season tires. Front wheel drive, some of the best all season tires in the business. And with these 19 inch rims and 40 series sidewall tires, very aggressive styling overall. The 40 series sidewall may compromise the ride quality a little bit, but we'll see how that goes once we take it out for a drive. I like the body lines going through the door, through the door handle area and the lower side skirt rocker panel area has also a very nice flare. A little bit of shiny chrome surrounding the window trim, blacked out B-pillar, the mirrors, get an LED turn signal on them. The glass fills up the entire frame, blind spot monitoring on the glass. We get smart access for the driver and the front passenger. Continuing out rear, same rear wheel and tire setup. A smaller brake caliper is the only difference. Gas cap is not pushed open. I'll show you the latch is inside. We get the more smoke taillights for the XSE trim too. Faux vent, turn signals and reverse lights are all LED. I'm liking the spoiler that we get for the XSE trim level Camry Toyota in the center. Quad exhaust tips, pretty aggressive rear diffuser. But speaking of the exhaust tips and rear diffuser, let's fire up this 2.5 liter four cylinder and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the 2.5 liter four cylinder sold by Toyota for the 2023 Camry XSE. And it sounds pretty good for what it is, making a decent amount of power at 206 horsepower, 186 pound feet of torque, made it to an eight speed automatic transmission and front wheel drive. You can expect zero to 60 in the low to mid seven second range. So definitely decent when it comes to acceleration. You can see the aluminum stick connecting your two strut towers. Should help the handling quite a bit as well. We can shut this hood right up. We'll see what's going on in front of the radiator. We may also have a couple additional supports we do. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera. You have a couple of braces, boom, on both sides of your radiator. We'll take one more step back, get one last look at the front styling of the 2023 Camry XSE. And let's take a step to the side and check out the interior. We get smart access again for the driver and the front passenger. Taking a step inside, up top we get soft touch materials with aluminum leading flushly to your aluminum door handle, Gushy Soft for the armrest, Gushy Soft for the center area, Auto One Touch for all four windows, four-way adjustable mirrors. For the storage, not the most, you could probably squeeze a couple candy bars, maybe a six-inch sub vertically, 
and a 16 ounce water bottle, but make sure the lid is tightly closed because it is sideways. Speaker for the Audio Plus for the XSE, also available for the XLE, but we get it here, the upgraded audio system, the seats are leather trim, perforated for the center, uh, heated, not ventilated, but they are fully adjustable. You got lumbar control, you can recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats. The bolstering is decent, but pretty widely bolstered, so it can fit basically everybody's um, body frame. But anyway, taking a step inside, we can really check it out. So firing it up, engine start, stop button, everything fires right to life. So first thing you notice is the steering wheel. It's pretty thick. We get decent 10 and two bolstering notch, nine and three fits well in your hand. The horn area is rubberized, the horn itself. Pretty aggressive sounding horn. People should definitely be getting out of your way. On the left side of the steering wheel, these buttons adjust the infotainment cluster. You can return, answer and hang up your phone calls, volume and voice commands. On the right side, forward collision alert, lane departure warning, cruise control settings overall. We got the AM, FM and Sirius and you can skip your song. As far as those infotainment adjustments, right now we're looking at our advanced safety features that are currently on. You can turn all of them either on or off. Above that, we have our tire pressure plus system status. Above that, audio, which is currently disabled with digital speedo in the top right corner, driving support and fuel economy, which also includes a eco indicator and digital speedo. My personal favorite to look at at all times would probably be this eco indicator. So we'll leave it here for the purpose of this review. On the left side, we have a tack that goes to about 67 100 RPM, 160 for the speedometer, and everything's outlined in red for the sport themed XSE. To the left of the steering wheel, we have our automatic high beams, trash control. You can press and hold to open up your tailgate, press and hold to open up your gas cap. The stocks have a very satisfying click. We have auto headlamps, daytime running lights you can also turn off. We don't get auto rain sensing wipers. It would be nice to get on an XSE, but the intermittent stock is right here on the wiper stock. To the left of the steering wheel, also we have some secret storage you can throw like some rubber outlets, use this as an ashtray if that's what you're into, get a good look at your pedals. We get a floor mounted accelerator pedal too with a hood latch release as well. Some stitched trim for the center part of the dashboard continues on both sides of this interior and a very gushy soft dashboard up top. The touchscreen is a nine inch touchscreen upgraded compared to the SE and LE. We also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can press this map button, navigation's not installed, at least not yet, but with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you can press this map and the phone will be mirrored to the screen. The home screen, you can see what's available on it. You can see your fuel economy, audio, and the phone settings to the left. It's flickering like crazy, but it's not actually doing so in real life. Beneath that, we have air vents. For the redesign, this is the new location for the air vents that used to be right here in the corners. Dual zone automatic climate control too. Vent controls in the center. Wireless charging pad, and this little cubby can hide away for some secret storage beneath, but personally, I prefer to look at the wireless charging pad. We have a 12 volt, good spot for a radar detector. As soon as I can figure out how to access it, there we go. Cool, gear selector controls the eight speed automatic transmission. We get manual shift controls on the gear selector. You can upshift and downshift in the improper directions. Backup camera, we can see it's not the best resolution, but it's a solid resolution, very wide view with guidance lines and trajectory. You can also see different views overall, a little narrower view if that's what you're into. Personally, I actually think this is a little bit better than the previous view. So we'll leave it here. We also get paddle shifters. If you want to use the gear selector for your manual shift controls, we'll throw right back into park, immediately returns us to the home screen. Two cup holders with a pass-through, pushy things to keep your drinks in place. Heated seats up front, electron parking brake with auto hold. We have eco, normal, and sport mode. We'll start the review off in normal, chest out, sport, and you see what the differences are. The armrest is gushy, soft leather stitch trim. Very spacious too. I would expect you to fit a 12 pack of 16 or 12 ounce cans easily USB-C and USB-A in here too. Cool, you can shut this thing right up. The glove box, pull this latch, it's damp, not lined with felt, but it's large. I'd expect you to fit between 20, maybe 25 license plates. It's wide, but not the tallest. I wouldn't expect you to fit more than one pair of shoes in here. The faux carbon trim also specific to the Sporty XSE trim. Not a frameless rear view mirror, but it's auto dimming and you get three garage home link settings on it. The windshield visor gets this extension for the sun, interior light, LED, no sunroof, that comes standard on the V6 XSE. This is just a four cylinder, sunglass holders, cool. That's about it though for this front seat. We can check out the window sticker really quick, see any features that I may have missed on this 2023 Toyota Camry XSE. So as we mentioned, mechanically, 2.5 liter, four cylinder, 206 horse, 186 pound feet of torque, paddle shifters, eight speed transmission, sport tune suspension. You can pause, take a look at all the standard features. Essentially a base XSE base price at $31,245 after $1,010 for the delivery processing and handling fee. 
total price at 32,255. After 700 bucks in distributor options, total price still sitting a tick under 33,000 bucks. So pretty solid value overall. You put this window sticker back. That's about it for the front seat. Let's hop out back and see the overall space back here as well. So up top, we have um, grained soft plastic material. That's nice for a vehicle in this price point. Middle portion is gushy soft, so is the armrest. Still get the aluminum with the aluminum door handle. Auto one touch for the window. Decent little storage pocket slash cup holder. Stepping inside, we can unbutton this seat belt. The seats are still perforated. Leather for the center portion, leather trim seats. Leather continues all the way out to the door frame. So very couch-like and solid bolstering, even for a back seat. We can test out this rear legroom, a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings. And I still have plenty of overall knee room. I have at least two, three inches for my knees. Map box behind both of the front seats. We get air vents too. That's an appreciated feature. Adjustable air vents, soft touch materials, headroom. I have at least two, three inches of it. Interior lights are LED, very premium back here. We can open up this little seat belt, jab our hand into the center cubby, and it's pretty soft leather here too, square cup holders for the pass-through good spot for your phone. That's about it though for the back seat, guys. Not a whole lot of charging, no charging at all, actually, but I am appreciative of the air vents. That's about it for the back seat. We'll hop out back, check out the cargo space of this 2023 Camry XSE. So outside of the Y, there's a button that electrically shoots open the Camry tailgate. Be careful though, because these hinges will crush your cargo if you load it up any higher than say this level. These two latches fold down the rear seats, 60-40 split, and you fold them down, I'd expect you to fit up to a 55, 60 inch seat back here. Not the widest opening, but very deep trunk. I'm not even remotely close to reaching the back seat. Secret storage, we can see what's going on underneath here. Fix the flat kit with a spare tire underneath but massive overall cargo space the wheel well cutouts are pretty large so i would expect you to fit a golf bag horizontally back here you'll definitely fit it vertically very impressive overall cargo space we can shut this tailgate or trunk right up take one more little walk around of the 2023 toyota camry xse it's a nice vehicle i'm a big fan of the xse trim level the base price at 31,000 bucks basically no options here totaling us out under $33,000, I think it's a great value as far as performance. Let's take it out for a drive. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the 2023 Toyota Camry XSE. Let's take it out for a drive. And stepping onto this highway, light throttle, low end torque doesn't feel bad. It's not gonna blow you away, of course, with a 2.5 liter four cylinder, but it gets up and goes without even having to cross 3,000 RPM. All right, guys, throwing it in. Steering feels really good. We're still in normal mode. We'll throw it in the sport. At some point in this review, you see the differences are. But in normal, the steering feels good. The ride quality is also excellent. You can run over these manhole covers. Barely even realize they're there. And just cruising along, the isolation from the road is extremely quiet. We don't get dual pane windows like we get in the Avalon, but you hardly even notice it. The isolation is impressive, and we get the supports to make up for the soft ride quality. The body roll is still basically non-existent mentioned in the under the hood portion of the review we get the brace connecting the two strut towers and from the radiator we have two additional braces so although it's an excellent ride quality for a mid-size sedan the handling is still definitely there all right guys we can try it out in sport one time see what the differences are we stay in our overdrive gear so it doesn't automatically downshift us but on the gas okay yeah we're going to push it a whole lot farther than that second gear is long we got to like 45 miles per hour, which is the speed limit. And we we're still only at 4,800 RPM. We didn't even cross 5,000. So it would be nice to get some shorter gears for this 2.5 liter four cylinder. We'll try out these manual shift controls. Third gear, second gear on the gas. Yeah, after about 5,000, it really starts to pick up. It doesn't have the most torque down low though. So you're gonna have to rev it out. That's why I wish that first and second gear was a little bit shorter. All right, guys, we'll step out into a real highway right here. We'll try out the manual shift controls one more time. We get rev match downshift, which is cool. I was hoping to hop on here quickly, but it doesn't look like we'll be able to get the chance. Or looks like we'll try an acceleration off the line. Also pretty cool. So basically off the line, on the gas. Okay. Nice. All right, so we catch up to traffic pretty quickly. The shifts aren't like lightning quick and the ratios aren't very short, but for daily driving and highway fuel economy, you'll see it idles the engine down very well and allows us to get over 35 highway miles per gallon. And one more time, second gear on the gas. Okay, not bad. We get the highway speed pretty quickly and just cruising along highway speeds on concrete pavement 
you hear a little bit of road noise, but you would hear road noise in every vehicle. Compared to some of the other mid-size sedans, it's comparable. We just reviewed an Altima 2.5 SR, and this sounds just as quiet, if not quieter, and the Altima 2.5 SR had dual pane windows. So really good ride quality, very good sound isolation, and as far as acceleration, this thing will blow the Altima's doors off. You're doing zero to 60 about a second quicker. And although the gear ratios are a little bit long, on the highway cruising around 60, we're turning less than 1500 RPM, which is why we get over 35 highway miles per gallon. So there are some compromises for daily driving. Obviously it would be nice to get the shorter ratios so it feels a little bit snappier for the acceleration. But for highway driving, it's nice to get that max fuel economy. And now that we're back in eco mode, the steering doesn't really change much. In sport, yes, it gets a little bit heavier, but really not by much. The biggest difference will be the transmission and the throttle sensitivity. All right, guys, taking a step out here. We'll close this review off after this. One last acceleration, we're about half throttle. Yep, not bad, definitely gets the speed well. Acceleration is certainly not an issue in this vehicle, but overall, if you're looking for a more premium mid-size sedan, you don't need to do zero to 60 in five and a half seconds. You're more than happy getting there in seven. You prioritize the overall out the door price, comfort, space, and materials. This vehicle is excellent for the money. With a base price around $32,000, you have Apple CarPlay, nine inch touchscreen, upgraded sound system, well, upgraded engine technically you're making about three extra horsepower i know it's not a big difference but you actually feel it compared to the le and sc we reviewed in this channel it does feel a little bit peppier and the quad exhaust tips are also super cool so if you're looking for a mid-size sedan around a 30 dollars price point you want it to be a little bit sportier and a little bit more premium while still having solid performance i would definitely recommend checking out the 2023 toyota camry XSE. And a huge thanks to Toyota Tampa Bay for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to their inventory below. And if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Bill. And a huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you'd like to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.